Hey everyone, so this video we're going to take a look at the Puppeteer Overlap tool, which I have a video on my channel previously when this tool was actually in development and I was talking with a developer and now he's actually released the tool. So I wanted to do kind of a quick demo of the tool and just take a look at the, the functionality of it. If you've watched any of my videos on my channel, you know that I love using overlap type of tools, things like Bro Dynamics, Overlapper, as well as LM Spring, any way to just add that extra polish to your animation or speed up the process of animating something like Tails can be really beneficial and honestly saves me countless hours of work when I have a tool like this to aid me and help me get some really nice overlap really quickly. So. What we have here is the website where you can actually download the tool. You can click the buy button down here and you can see kind of the key features of it. And you can also try it for free. So you can buy it on Gumroad. And I believe it's yeah, $30 for a personal or individual license. And the developer Adrian actually gave me a few license keys to give away. So basically what I'm gonna do is Anybody that leaves a comment here, I'll just pick someone at random and then set you up with a free license here. So you can start using this tool and experiment with it in your animations. And he also has a really helpful overview video that I highly recommend checking out. This is gonna be a really great sort of tutorial or introduction to the tool. So you can kind of see some of the functionality, some of the, some of the results that you get with the different options here in this tool. So this is a great like overview tutorial, but what I wanna do in this case is kind of show you an example of where you could use this tool in, you know, on a real character in a real situation when you're wanting to add that, you know, extra bit of polish to an animation. So what I'm gonna do is open up Maya here and I've got this walk cycle and I actually have a full walkthrough on my YouTube channel, breaking down step-by-step step how to create this walk cycle here. But what I wanna do is take a look at using the Puppeteer tool, which I have opened right here, to add a bit of overlap to the arms. So typically when you know, you're know you thinking of an overlap tool, your first thought usually goes to something like a tail, because you know overlap tools are great for animating things like tails and can really speed up the process. But there's all different areas where you can utilize a tool like this to add that that extra bit of polish here. So what I've done is removed all of the arm animation on the right arm. I've actually kept it on the left arm because we're gonna see how the tool can actually help us in that scenario too. So on the right arm, you can see we have the shoulder moving if I play it here back and forth, but there's no movement on the arm. You can see it's staying in that same straight pose. So let's take a look at how we can use the puppeteer tool for this. So what I wanna do is select all of my control curves and I'll just hit create. And now we get a ton of different options that we can start to play around with. So what I found with pretty much any overlap tool, whether it's Bro Dynamics, whether it's Overlapper, or whether it's this puppeteer overlap tool, is that usually you can you can try to find you know similar settings across animations and across scenes that typically you you first start out with to start experimenting with the overlap that is created, but usually the settings are going to be pretty different depending on the animation, depending on the scene you're in. So I found that no one setting usually works great for every situation. So it usually just comes down to trial and error and experimenting with these settings, playing around with the sliders to see the results that you get. Now, one of the great things about the Puppeteer tool is that it is real time. So you can see instantly in the viewport what is actually happening to your animation, which saves a lot of time and allows you to have fun just experimenting with the settings and seeing the result that you get. So right off the bat with the default settings, you can see we're starting to get a bit of overlap in the arm. You can see it's starting to loosen up the arm there. And we're all already getting something that looks pretty good. Now what we're gonna start to do is adjust the drag. So this is the, the first thing that I'll adjust to kind of see the results that we get. So at default, it's gonna be set to 0.5 and I can start to increase this. And this is going to increase the drag on the arm. Now what this is going to do is increase that drag, but it's going to make the arm feel very heavy and almost feel more like a tail. It's kind of just following behind the body kind of just flapping behind the body. So this would be a great option for something like a tail or maybe floppy ears on a character to really increase increase that drag. But for this arm, it doesn't really work. So we could try to lower it, but now we're kind of just removing 
the overlap on on the rest of the arm so we're kind of removing the overlap on the on the elbow and the hand so what i like to do usually with the drag option which is kind of the main option that i will adjust when messing with the overlap tool here is i'll take this button right here and this is just the fall off curve adjustment so we can actually apply a curve to this value rather than just using that single slider and we have a bunch of different built-in fall off curve options. So this curve right here is one that I use pretty often. So what this will do will increase the overlap down the chain. So with this fall off that we're creating is that the upper part of the chain or the first control we selected, which is the upper arm control, is basically going to have less overlap than the controls further down the chain, meaning the elbow and the hand. So we're gonna start to get more overlap in those areas, which is really what we want. You can already see that playing through here. So we've removed that feeling of the, the hand kind of just flapping behind, dragging really far behind the body. And we're starting to keep it a bit more contained, but increasing the overlap on the elbow and the wrist, which is starting to work pretty well. And we can see it here from the front view, how well that's working. And if you want to, we can start to mess around with the min and max values. So if I bring the max value down, because I feel like it might be dragging a little bit too much, back and forth. So something like that might work, maybe around a value of 0.68 or so. And then we can adjust the min value. So if we bring it all the way down to zero, you can see the elbow is gonna feel, the elbow and wrist is gonna be dragging a little bit more. And you can just continue to play around with these settings. So I find using these fall off curves to be really helpful when adjusting the overlap here. So you can see by using this tool, we're able to get some nice, nice fluid movement in there with the arm. And there's also a bunch of different options in here with the overlap tool. So usually when I'm using this tool, I mainly stick with these animation options here, the drag being the main one and then the overshoot. Now, depending on the animation I'm working on, this overshoot might be helpful or it might not really do anything. So in our case, this isn't really going to do anything because this is a cycle animation. Our character is in a walk cycle. The arm is continually moving back and forth. And if I just hover my mouse over any one of these tools here, and this is a great thing about this tool is that you can hover your mouse over these options. And we can see down here on the bottom left that it gives us kind of a tool tip of what this does. And then it'll also pop up directly in the puppeteer tool as well. So basically when the object stops moving, this value takes over and that would add that sort of overshoot that's happening. So if an object is coming to a stop, you might have the arm continuing, you know, that overshoot back and forth until it comes to a final settle. But for this case, since it's a cycle, this isn't really gonna do anything for us. I can bring it down to zero. You can see the overlap is gonna look exactly the same. I can bring it all the way to one and it's gonna look the same as well. So this is really only important if you have an animation, maybe when a character is actually, you know, coming to a stop and you want that overshoot to happen. So the other options down here, are the actual physics options. So at a default value, the blending option is going to be set to zero. So this will actually blend physics with the animation overlap that we've established here up at the top. So I'll bring this to like a value of 0.6 or so just to start blending in the actual physics. And we can kind of see some of the changes that happens here. And so you can see already we're starting to, it's starting to change the animation based on this physics property. And we can adjust the blend to kind of adjust how much we're actually utilizing the physics there. So you can kind of play around with that as well. I'll bring it back up just so we can actually see the changes more easily. So this damping option is basically just going to slow down the movement. So if I bring it to you know, a value of one, you can kind of see the change that's happening there all the way to a value of zero and I can bring up the blend as well and we can start kind of tweaking these and again with the tool tip you, you hover over one of these and the twisting kind of does what it says the amount of twisting allowed on the actual controls and then the other option here is gravity so we have the direction that we can establish the x y and z coordinates and then we have the strength so at default it's going to be set to one we can increase this to actually see Pretty big change. And now you can see by increasing the strength there on the gravity option, you can see our arm, the overlap is really reduced. Our arm is feeling kind of stuck here at the side. It's feeling like a much heavier 
arm there by utilizing this this gravity option. So that's something you can play around with. I'll reduce that a bit. And then we also have the option for wind. So if you wanted to try to add wind to your scene, you could increase the strength. And a lot of the time this is going to produce some funky results because you're basically just adding some turbulence to the overlap, some wind in your scene. So in this case, the arm is kind of just flopping around here. And we can adjust some of the direction values here if we want to, to try to produce different results there. Oops, that's the gravity. That's the wrong, the wrong setting. Let me set that back. Let's try kind of adjusting the direction on some of these to kind of see what we get. So <laughs> this wind is typically going to produce some pretty weird results. I haven't really found a situation where I've needed this. Maybe if you're working on like a flight, like a big dragon character, and you want to add some like wind to the movement, you can play around with this option. The strength is going to need to be brought like way down. And you can adjust like the gust direction and the gust strength and also like the frequency to try to get something that feels a little bit different. But yeah, this wind option, it's not something I use too often. Uh, what I'll do is just bring this blend back to zero. So now we're just using the basic animation options of drag and overshoot. So real quickly, I want to show you how you can use this tool on just pre-existing animations. So usually with a tool like this, if I want to add overlap, what we did on the right arm is not something I would typically do. I would not just let overlap this overlap tool or really any overlap tool create all of the overlap for me. Usually I would, you know, create a base animation, create the base movement, and then apply something like this on top of it to add that extra bit of polish. So this left hand here, or this left arm we've actually animated. So it's actually moving. We hand keyed this in that tutorial, and this is kind of the basic movement that we're getting. So you can see we're getting some kind of drag on the elbow and some basic movement. So what we can do with this is actually just use the overlapper tool in Puppeteer here to actually add some overlap on top of this. So I'll just shift select the three controls and I'll hit create. And you can see where we can actually stack the overlap in our scene so we can keep creating these and adjusting them as well. So this is a really helpful tool here. And right off the bat, just by applying the overlap here to the existing animation, you can see we're, we're keeping the, the majority of the animation there. We're just adding that extra bit of polish. And again, we can start playing around with, with the drag options for this. Now you can see with the drag, before when we were using you know, the drag option for the, the right arm, and let me actually adjust that. So again, the great thing is we can just jump to our other overlap setting for the right arm and adjust this. I will take the fall off off here and then start to bring that drag up and kind of see the difference that's that's happening here. So we've got similar drag settings, but because we have the animation on top of this or the animation below this, so we already animated the arm, basically what we want it to do. So we're still getting that movement here. Um, so when I increase that drag value, it's not keeping the hand kind of locked behind the character like it was doing before. Like here we get the drag that feels like a tail and it's kind of just dragging and flopping behind the character. But since we have that animation underneath, when I increase the drag for the left arm, we're still getting the majority of that movement. We're just increasing that drag a bit. And we can also jump into fall off here for this option and do something similar for that to make sure the overlap is a bit more for the, the bottom half of the arm. And we can start to adjust this as well. Something like that. So this is something I would typically use the puppeteer overlap tool for is that usually I'm not going to let it do all the animation for me. You're not going to get the best results that way. The best way to, to utilize one of these tools is, you know, to build that basic animation. And if I take a look at this left arm, it's not a super complex arm animation happening here. It's you know, a couple keyframes here, keyframe frame about every fourth frame. So we're not dealing with a ton of in-betweens. We're just getting the basic movement of that, that arm in there. And then we can start using the overlapper tool to add that detail to it. And then of course you can do things like this with the fingers and starting to add a little bit of, you know, overlap to the fingers.
to start adding that, that extra bit of polish. Hey, so it's me from the future. I realized while editing this video that I forgot to mention a pretty important aspect of the Puppeteer tool and something that's been added to this release build that wasn't in the build before that I was testing out. So if we right click the bake function, we now have the ability to bake to an animation layer. And then we also have the ability to turn on cycle so that you can make sure that the actual overlap that's created is a cycling overlap. So you can make sure that your first and last pose is the same, really important for working on any type of cycle animation. So now that these are in here, this is really helpful for animators working. We can bake to an animation layer and work completely non-destructively. And then now when we're working on our cycles, we can make sure we turn this function on. So this is just something I wanted to mention in the new release build for Puppeteer Tool. So yeah, hopefully this video is helpful for you. And like I said, I have a few licenses to give away. So if you want a free license, just leave a comment below and I'll pick a few people at random so we can set you up with one of these free licenses for Puppeteer so you can start using it in your own animations. So if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for future content.